You are watching a replay of an actual modal AE test of an SCBA pressure vessel. The early part of the test is being played back at 10 times normal speed because the test normally takes about an hour. The pressure is represented by the red line you see rising in the graph at the left and also in the lower right corner below the waveform window. The yellow squares represent the background energy. The first pressure hold is at 4500 psi which is the normal operating pressure of an SCBA. Next comes the 7500 psi test pressure. Events occur more rapidly and the background energy increases. As the 7500 psi level is reached, the background energy begins to oscillate. This means for this type of SCBA that the vessel will fail before the expected minimum burst of 13,500 psi. Notice the rate slows down and the background energy level drops during the pressure hold. This is a good sign. Another type of graph, not shown here, called a stability graph, indicates that the vessel is not progressing to failure at test pressure. Modal AE works by detecting ultrasonic waves produced at fracture sites within the composite material. Much like earthquake waves, modal AE waves propagate through the vessel to transducers that are attached to the surface. The waveforms recorded and are then analyzed for certain speed, energy, and frequency characteristics that reveal the type of fracture. For example, a fiber toe fracture or a fracture in the epoxy resin. More and more fractures occur in the material as the pressure increases and at some point the vessel begins to fail and approaches final rupture of the material. Prior to rupture there is an interesting effect that occurs in all composite vessels called background energy oscillation. Composite failure is progressive. Stress concentrations are created as weaker fibers break. As fibers break, the load they were carrying redistributes to neighboring portions of strong material. This is called local load sharing. It's like having multiple ropes holding up a swing. If one breaks, the remaining ropes carry the load. The fibers used to make the composite materials are extremely small, about 10 microns in diameter. So there are usually numerous small fractures before a large fracture occurs. The numerous small fractures create acoustical energy that is called the background energy. Background energy increases with rising pressure until a point is reached where it begins to oscillate due to local load sharing redistribution times and the time it takes for new fractures to begin in the load sharing material as the load increases. Oscillation usually continues until final rupture. But the nice thing is that the pressure at which oscillation begins is a definite percentage of burst pressure. The percentage of burst pressure is calibrated by testing similar vessels. If a vessel is significantly damaged, then the background energy will begin to oscillate at a lower pressure than normal. This indicates that the burst pressure will also be lower than normal. The next part will show the vessel in the burst chamber. This part of the test only takes about three or four minutes, so it will be played back in real time. First, as the pressure starts from zero, we see the usual flow noise. Then everything is very quiet until the pressure goes above about 8,000 psi. Before we get to that point, we will say a little more about the vessel. The vessel is surrounded by the test stand and the transducer is attached to the upper part of the cylindrical section. The transducer is covered by a white piece of styrofoam. A black cable runs from the transducer to the preamplifier which is sitting on the edge of the thick steel pipe section that surrounds the test stand. There is a large notch in the middle of the vessel oriented in the axial direction. The notch is very deep, running halfway through the composite thickness. This glass fiber pressure vessel burst at 12,558 psi, 
which is below the required minimum burst pressure of 13,500 psi. At the standard test pressure of 7,500 psi, modal AE testing predicted that the vessel would fail below the minimum pressure because the background energies began to oscillate at the test pressure. In a moment, the waves will begin to arrive very rapidly as the progression to failure begins in earnest. Note the energy in the waves is much higher now and the background energy oscillation has commenced. The material near the notch bears the load for a time but as the load increases, the failure process picks up in the material and the background energy rises. As the stress is redistributed and stronger material is encountered, the failure progression slows down and the background energy falls. For a brief period, the material once again can carry the load. As the pressure ineluctably increases, the cycle repeats. The timing of the oscillation cycles depends on the quality of the nearby material and the loading rate. The vessel is getting closer to rupture and will fail shortly. The background energy makes one final rise.